Hello guys, welcome to our channel. In this episode, we will discuss everything about the basics of our respiratory system. I am the medical coding guy. Our respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help us breathe. This system helps our body get oxygen from the air so our body systems can work. It also clears waste gases such as carbon dioxide from your blood. Common problems include allergies, diseases, or infections. It is not just for breathing air in and out, but also it helps us to talk, smell, protects our airways from harmful chemicals, and warms air and humidity level of our body needs. Our respiratory system is divided into two sections, the upper and the lower respiratory tract. As you can see on the screen, the made up of uh, your nose uh, going down to your lungs area here. Try to put an imaginary line right here, just above the trachea. This is going to be our upper respiratory area, okay? And the uh, bottom portion is going to be the lower respiratory tract, okay? So as we can see on the screen as well, the upper respiratory tract consists of the following. The nose and the nasal cavity, all right? Of course, we breathe in air through this area. We can also breathe in air through our mouth, all right? Or the oral cavity. Once the air goes inside through your nostrils, all right? Through the nose, the air will flow through this portion called the pharynx. Pharynx is also a digestive system part, okay? So do not forget that. And it will go down towards the larynx, which is a tube, which is also called the voice box, okay? And take note about this Adam's apple or what we call the laryngeal prominence. Typically, it's larger for male than the female. Those are the part of your upper respiratory tract. Going down to the lower respiratory tract, we have here your trachea, which is also called the windpipe. It divides at the carina into the left and the right bronchus. And the air will flow towards the bronchus, towards the bronchioles, and lastly, the alveoli, where the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange happens. These parts are located inside the lungs. We have two of them, the right and the left lung. All right? So take note that each lung has different number of lobes. The right lung has three lobes, while the left lung has two lobes, okay? Please ensure to understand the medical terms used in this system. It is quite easy compared to other body systems such as, uh, car uh, such as cardiovascular system and digestive system because only few parts are here. Only few major parts are here in the respiratory system you need to be aware of the medical terms used. For example, for the lungs, we use the term pneumo or pulmo, all right? But other things such as the trachea, the larynx, and the pharynx, so those terms will use the same spelling. For example, infection of the pharynx, that's going to be called the pharyngitis. Infection of the larynx, laryngitis. And for trachea, that's going to be tracheitis. So it's quite easy, right? So let's now proceed to ICD-10 coding. I have mentioned here few guidelines for the respiratory system coding. Respiratory system conditions can be found in chapter 10, which are the J codes. Not much of major guidelines here, so you don't have to code the signs and symptoms in conjunction with the definitive diagnosis, unless those signs and symptoms are not part of the integral disease process. So overall, the ICD-10 coding for respiratory system is quite easy. Let's have some example. Patient is admitted due to acute exacerbation COPD. So again, don't forget as well to check terms like COPD, which means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And it's mentioned here, history of tobacco dependence. So how are you going to identify the codes here? Just go to COPD. So again, if you go to alphabetic index and find a term disease. Okay, let's try to do this one. So what you want to search is the term disease, okay? So after you go to the word disease to locate for your uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, of course, what type of disease is present, right? So 
that's going to be pulmonary disease, right? So go to letter P after locating your letter D or the term disease from your uh, alphabetic index, okay? So let's locate uh, to letter P. Do not forget to use your books for this one, okay? So once you go to pulmonary, okay? All right, so you will see here what type of uh, pulmonary disease is present? Chronic obstructive, okay? However, if you will check the scenario, it's mentioned here due to acute exacerbation COPD. So you have to check that term as well. It's mentioned acute exacerbation, all right? So you will use your J44.1 for that. So to confirm, just go to your tabular index, all right, and check this one. So that's going to be your first code for this scenario, followed by your Z87.891 to indicate the history of tobacco dependence. So all you need to do here is to go to your alphabetic index, go to history tab, and then go to tobacco dependence. You will get Z87.891 here. And do not forget as well that uh, history of tobacco dependence is different from current tobacco use or current tobacco dependence or abuse. So please take care of that. You won't be using the Z codes for those conditions, okay? Now, let's proceed to the second uh, scenario. Patient came to the office because of cough and colds, but the final diagnosis of the doctor here is pharyngitis. Take notes that for signs and symptoms, if it's already inherent or an integral part of the disease process, you don't have to code them anymore. So in this case, it's very easy. All you need to do is to code pharyngitis, which will fall under your J02.9. If you go to your alphabetic index and search the term pharyngitis, right? So just go to letter P and locate the term pharyngitis. And then from that, you can easily get the first code that will appear here or the default code, which is J02.9, all right? So just code this one, and then that's going to be your diagnosis code. It's quite easy, all right? I'm not saying this will serve as a bonus question for your exam. However, uh, you can gain a lot of score if it's just an ICD-10 CM coding for respiratory system. Next will be the procedure coding or the CPT codes. Laterality is very important with this topic. You have to identify if the procedure will be done for the left or the right side. For example, left lung versus right lung, all right? For example, you have the right side of the sinus or the left side of the sinus, left side of the nose or right side of the nose. It's very important. Next is going to be the scope versus open approach. We all know that for scope procedures, guys, diagnostic scope is already included with your surgical scope procedure. Let's say, for example, this uh, scenario at the bottom. A diagnostic lung thoracoscopy was done, right? So usually, guys, when the doctor will check all right, what's wrong with the patient? Why is he having these signs and symptoms? The doctor will do a scope of procedure to diagnose what's going on. So that's what we call diagnostic procedure. Now, once the doctor uh, checked, all right, that part of the body, specifically this one is lung thoracoscopy. So the scope will be inserted towards the lungs. Now, the doctor detected a single tumor, which is cancerous. So the doctor, of course, will do some pathology all right, uh, procedures or do a biopsy procedure to check whether this tumor is cancerous or not, okay? The surgeon has excised the lower lobe of the right lung using VATS procedure. So VATS is your video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery. Now, as you can see, it was done during the same day. Let's say in the morning after that, in the afternoon, the doctor has done this procedure, all right, concurrently. Do not code anymore your diagnostic procedure, right? Especially if it's going to be uh, done on the same side. Because again, the diagnostic scope procedure is already inherent to your surgical scope approach. So let's find that one from your um, CPT book, okay? So let's just open this one. And let's proceed to VATS procedure, okay? You can see some codes from your respiratory system involving scope right for example for the bronchus you have the bronchoscopy procedure okay for the lung procedure that's going to be vats procedure all right so do not forget to uh, check the guidelines here uh you can see it in the paragraph where you can see the term vats okay let's just proceed here right. vats it's your video assisted thoracic surgery so you have your surgical thoracoscopy all right and it mentions here, always include diagnostic thoracoscopy. 
So do not code it anymore if it's done on the same day process. Okay. You will not be coding your thoracoscopy diagnostic here. Okay. So whichever was done for the patient, uh, I guess that's going to be the code right here. Right. So you have to check the approach the doctor was done. However, we won't be coding the diagnostic procedure anymore and we will proceed directly to your surgical procedure, which is what? Excision of the lower lobe of the right lung. So basically, you have the right lung here. So the doctor will just excise this part of the lung right here. Uh, you will be coding here your lobectomy, okay? So please take note of that. So we have different types of Lung removal, the entire lung will be removed. That's going to be called pneumonectomy. If it's going to be a single lobe only that will be removed, that's going to be lobectomy. And if it's a part of the lobe or just a segment of the lobe, we will call it segmentectomy or wedge resection. All right. So just uh, find it here. All right. Surgical thoracoscopy vats with your lobectomy procedure. Okay. So just uh, code it from this. Just use this code. So you can code 32663 in this case with lobectomy single lobe, all right? But if the doctor will remove two lobes, just code by lobectomy here, all right? So that's going to be the two lobes. And then if it's the entire lung that will be removed, code pneumonectomy. Do not forget modifier. Uh, it's mentioned here, right lung, okay? So just put modifier. RT, right, after your 32663. So that's going to be the answer for this case. Okay, so just try to review the guidelines, but overall, respiratory system, both with your ICD coding and your CPT coding, is quite easy. Not super easy, however, uh, it's easier than the other major guidelines like your cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, etc. And that's it for this day, guys. And always remember, Without knowledge, there is no power. And please hit the subscribe button, share this to your friends so they can know more about medical coding. See you again. So long. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.